Hi everybody, as many of you probably are already aware, I've been a huge fan of the Trails series for over a decade now. Ever since I first got that first Trails in the Sky game back on the PSP. I've been following these characters' journey throughout Zemuria for over a decade, and even though like the gaps between releases do seem to be getting larger and larger and larger as time goes on, I still seem to get myself sucked right back on into these worlds whenever a new game releases. So today I want to talk about Trails into Reverie, the latest entry into the series to be released for the PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and PC. And I'd also like to thank XSeed for an early review copy. And now with that out of the way, let's dive right on in to this review. Let me get one thing out of the way real fast. Since Trails into Reverie acts as a conclusion to both the Crossbell arc as well as the Erebonian arc, this is not a good place to begin the series. In fact, it's a downright horrible place for a first Triumer to come and join in. All sorts of characters from Liberto to Erebonia to Crossbell to even Calvard are going to be coming at you with the quickness, and you're expected to know exactly who these characters are. Because even though this is a Trails game and they do blab on incessantly here, they don't really do a whole lot about their backstory. However, all that being said, there is a story synopsis summary for the Crossbell and Erebonian games over in the start menu as well as a character log and location encyclopedia of sorts, just in case you've forgotten any of the finer details from the previous games. You begin with Lloyd and the rest of the SSS as they're preparing for the Crossbell Independent Celebration. But again, this is a Trails game and this is Crossbell, so nothing can actually go right, and everything that could possibly go wrong does. So Lloyd and the gang set off to see what they can do to set things right in the city. But interestingly, you don't just deal with Lloyd and his problems here, because Trails into Reverie uses something called the Trails to Walk system, where you can really kind of play like four stories at once, and you can switch between them at any time. You have Lloyd's aforementioned story, Reen and his harem antics going on, and the mysterious Dark Sea, who's traveling along with two cold-blooded teeny bopper assassins, who you might know from that 3 and 9 novel that was introduced back in Cold Steel 4. In addition to those three main paths, there's also the Reverie Corridor too but we'll get into that in just a minute. The game is divided into multiple acts as well as days, and once you complete one act, you'll have to move on and finish the other character's acts before you can see more. In this way, the game gives you the freedom of choice insofar as choosing who you want to play as, but it's not like you can finish five acts with Reen and then go back and start it back at act one with Lloyd. You kind of have to do them all somewhat together. Also, the majority of the acts do take place in different cities and regions, and once you're done with one act, you can't go back to the previous region. But the game does do a great job of telling you when these cutoff points are, so don't think that you're going to miss anything if you really just want to see everything that there is to offer. Long-running fans of the series might remember the general structure and layout of Trails in the Sky 3rd Chapter, where you had like the tiniest bit of story with Kevin and Reese before they were thrown into the world of Phantasma, where the vast majority of the game took place. Trails into Reverie is somewhat similar in this regard, but I think it's just done so much better this time around. Whereas you were thrown into Phantasma within the first few minutes of third chapter, you're not going to hit the Reverie Corridor until probably like the 10 hour mark here. So the story unfolding with Reen, Lloyd, and C isn't just some like throwaway story, it's integral to the overarching plot and development of the whole Zemurian saga. Whereas the majority of the previous games all had side quests during the main quest, that is not the case at all here. The various side quests are relegated to the Reverie Corridor, and it's here where a lot of the action takes place too. You're able to build up your dream party any which way you want to, then head off exploring the randomly generated dungeons, gathering extremely powerful loot, quartz, and equipment, so that whenever you do go back to the real world, you'll be able to kick some ass and take names. The Reverie Corridor literally explicitly states that it's there for you to power up. So if you've always wanted to kind of like build up your dream team and then go off battling super bosses, then this is the game for you. Each floor has a powerful boss known as a guardian, and once you defeat it, you'll gain a ceiling stone, and each of the stones do different things. For example, the blue ceiling stone unlocks J-Dreams, which are essentially like those stories that were locked behind the doors in third chapter, and gold stones unlock random characters. And if you don't like the character that you're given, just like reset the game and try it again. Then, the red stone unlocks minigames, which are actually rather quirky, unique, and fun. If you've played the Cold Steel games, then you know exactly what this battle system is going to be like. 
everything from those games are still there. From the limit breaks, to the crafts, to the arts, to the brave orders. It is all there. But some additions, like burst links, which are massively powerful group attacks that also increase your BP by 2 points, as well as the ability to level up your orbit slots by a third level for super rare quartz, are new here. I honestly think that the battle system is one of the best, and I am glad that they really didn't change it up too much. But I will say this, since you do start off so powerful, I mean, you're like level 100 after all, I really can't wait to get to Calvard and just kind of get like reset back to level 1. I mean, you're over here running through the very first stratum of the Reverie Corridor, and I'm picking up like incredibly powerful accessories that used to be end game accessories, so it's just kind of getting to be a bit much. Anyway, through here, you take on missions to increase your rank and also grab Reverie Points, which is what you gain from fighting well in battle and also making correct moral decisions during the cutscenes. All of the quality of life features that you've come to expect are here, from fast travel to cutscene skipping to super fast auto battling, as well as the voice acting and difficulty level selection. It is all here. And I also, I know that this might not bother some other people out there, but it definitely bothers me, and I think that it needs to be said. 99% of the time when these characters are talking, they're focused on the story and they're focused on the task at hand. But sometimes during that other like 1% of the time, they say things that really bother me. Most of like predatory things, like Wazi going over and hitting on Lloyd out of the blue, or Rishia and Ilya talking about their cup sizes. To me, it's just like a complete turnoff and I can't stand it. Otherwise though, I had a blast with my time with Trails of Into Reverie. And honestly, the game can really take you as long as you would like it to. You could spend countless hours fighting and leveling up and putting together your dream teams over in the Reverie Corridor, or you could spend about 40 or so hours and just focus on the story. It's really up to you, so your mileage will definitely vary. I will say this though, if you have a PlayStation 5, buy that version, because you'll automatically get all the other save bonuses brought over into it. Whereas if you buy like the PS4 version or the Switch version, you'll only get the bonuses that you actually earned from the save data that you really carry over. So at the end of the day, it's just going to save you a whole lot of headaches if you just pick up that PS5 version and get everything that the game wants to give you. So that's it for my review of Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie. What do you all think about the game, and are you excited for it? Let's get a discussion going here, and let's all talk about it in chat. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you like what I do here on the channel and you'd like to see more, please head on over to the Patreon for some early access videos and behind the scenes photographs. The links to it are over in the video description. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.